Good afternoon, guys. It's time for Junie B. Jones. And, you know, we finished our Junie B. Jones in a Little Monkey Business chapter book. So now we're going to read a different Junie B. Jones book. And this one is Junie B. Jo Junie B., excuse me, First Grader at Last. And it's the same author, Barbara Park. And what genre, do you remember what genre we said the Junie B. Jones books are? They are fiction. They're not real. I guess they could be realistic fiction. Some of this stuff could happen. How many of you have a composition book at home that looks like this? Or a desk at home that looks like this? All right. Here's our, what is this page? Title page. Good. And then remember, in chapter books and all of your nonfiction books, um, but especially in your chapter books, they can be fiction or nonfiction, you're going to have the table of contents. That's the names of the chapters and what pages I can find them on. Okay. Chapter one. Here's our picture for chapter one. It looks like she's sitting at her desk thinking, maybe writing in her journal. Thursday. Dear first grade journal, I was right. Yesterday was the first day of school. It's new here. Today, my teacher handed out these journals. It's making, he is making us write in these things. Only I don't even know what to write. My teacher has muscles and a mustache. His name is Mr. Scary. He made that name up, I believe. I'm not even scared of him hardly. From Junie B, first grader. So now she's in first grade in this book, and she has a different teacher, Mr. Scary. I put my pencil down, and I looked at what I wrote. I did a sigh. <sighs> I'd like to go home now, I said to just myself. Shh, said a girl named May. I'm still trying to do my work. There's Mr. Scary, her new first grade teacher. There's Jeannie B, and there's May. May sits next to, pe next to me in the back of the room. I do not actually care for that girl. Just then, my teacher stood up at his desk. His mustache sound smiled real friendly. Okay, boys and girls, you can stop writing now, he said. As I told you earlier, we will be working in our journals quite often this year. In fact, it won't be long until your journal starts feeling like an old friend. I rolled my eyes at the ceiling. What kind of old friend looks like a notebook, I said. Shh, said May again. You shouldn't talk while the teacher is talking to Junie Jones. I looked at her real annoyed. B, I said. My name is Junie B. I think I have mentioned that to you before, May. I leaned closer to her face. B, 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 I said. After that, I slumped in my seat and I put my head on my desk. That was one of our words last week. I peeked at the other children who sit next to me. Their names are Herb and Lenny and Jose. I do not know them from a hole in the ground. I did another sigh. <sighs> First grade is not what it's cracked up to be. My room is named room one. I was nervous when I came in here yesterday. That's how come daddy had to carry me all the way to the room because my legs felt like squishy jello. He put me down outside the door. Well, here we are, Junie B, he said. First grade, at last. My stomach had flutterflies in it, and also my arms had prickly goosebumps. You ever had goosebumps before? Feels like little bumps on your arms and butterflies in your stomach, like you're nervous. And also, my forehead, forehead had drops of sweaty. I'm a wreck, I said. Daddy smiled very nice. There's nothing to worry about, Junie B, I promise, he said. You're going to love first grade. Just think, there's a whole room full of brand new friends just waiting to meet you. He ruffled my hair. Are you ready to go in now, he asked. Hmm, are you ready to begin your first grade adventure? I looked at him a real long time. Then I quick spun around and I zoomed down the hall as fast as I could. And Daddy zoomed right after me. He caught up with me speedy quick and he carried me back to my class. Only this time, he carried me straight into the room. As soon as he put me down again, I hid behind his legs. 
Cause that place was a zoo, I tell you. There were people everywhere. There were girls and boys and mothers and daddies and grandmas and grandpas, and also there were drooly babies and strollers. Then all of a sudden, my whole mouth came open because good news, I finally saw someone I knew. I jumped up and down and all around. Daddy, Daddy, it's Lucille. I hollered, remember Lucille? Lucille was my bestest friend from kindergarten last year. Lucille was standing at a desk next to the window. I ran to her in a jiffy. Then I hugged and hugged that girl and I couldn't even stop. Lucille, Lucille, it's me, it's me. It's your bestest friend from kindergarten, Judy B. Jones. I tried to pick her up. I'm so glad to see you, friend. I shouted real joyful. Lucille pulled my arms off her. Stop it, Junie B. Stop it, she said. You're wrinkling my new back-to-school dress. This thing cost a fortune. I stopped hugging her. Lucille smoothed and fluffed herself. I smoothed and fluffed her too. There, I said, good as new. After that, I grabbed Lucille's hand and I started to pull. Come on, Lucille, let's go find two desks together, I said. I think we should sit, I think we should sit near the door. Want to, huh? If we sit near the door, we can stare at people who walk down the hall. Lucille yanked her hand away. No, Junie B, no. I'm going to sit at this desk right here, she said. I already picked it out with my two new friends, Camille and Chanel. She pointed at the door. See them there, she said. I met them before you came, and they are saying goodbye to their mother. Aren't they precious? I looked at Camille and Chanel, and guess what? My eyes popped right out of my head. Wowie, wow, wow! Those girls were twins, that's why. I sprang way high in the air. Twins, twins, they're twins, Lucille. This is our lucky day. I pulled on her again. How many of you have ever um, seen identical twins before where the, the people look exactly alike? So there's Lucille, there's Junie B. Jones, and there's Camille and Chanel, the new, the new girls that Lucille met that are twins. Come on, Lucille, let's go touch them. Hurry, hurry, before a line forms. Lucille did not budge a muscle. Stop it, Junie B. Quit pulling on me, she said. Camille and Chanel don't want to be touched. And besides, I am their new best friend, not you. That was not nice. I looked surprised at that girl. Yes, but I can be their bestest friend along with you, right, Lucille? I asked. And all I have to do is meet them, right? And then all of us can be bestest friends together. Lucille shook her head. No, Junie B, I'm sorry, but you and I have already been best friends, remember? She said. We were best friends for a whole long year, and so now it's time for Camille and Chanel to get a turn. She did a shrug. It's only fair for me, she said. And besides, their names rhyme with my name, and yours doesn't. She wrinkled her nose very cute. Camille and Chanel and Lucille. See, isn't that darling? After, Lucille, after that, Lucille gave me a pat. Don't be sad, okay, she said. You and I can still be friends, Junie B, just not on a regular basis. After that, she waved her fingers and she said, ta-ta. Then she skipped to Camille and Chanel. And that's the end of chapter one. How do you think Junie B. Jones is feeling right now? Her best friend Lucille has kind of abandoned her for two new friends. But I want you to think about this. Is it okay for you to have more than just one friend? Absolutely. All right, make your predictions. What do you think is going to happen?